QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Budgeted Balance Sheet Reports. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. In the view dropdown, we got the hide icon bar, the open windows list checked off. Open windows are open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's open up that P, that L, that profit, that loss, that income statement. Change the range from 010123 to 022823 and then customize it so we can font number change to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. Open up the balance sheet in the reports drop down, company financial, the big balance sheet. Customize it with the ranges they are changing 010123 to 022823. Fonts to the numbers are also changing. Times are changing, ranges are changing, font sizes are changing. It's just crazy times these days. So that's what we have here. That's the setup process we do every time. We've been taking a look at the budget process. In prior presentations, we considered the budget for the profit and loss report, which is the main report we think of as a budget, oftentimes that being the performance report. Now we're looking at the balance sheet budget report. In prior presentations, we talked about exporting to from Excel. I mean, I'm sorry, exporting from QuickBooks to Excel the seeds of the budget. We did so with a trial balance so that we can then create the budget accounts from it. And then when it, within Excel, we generated our budget and now we're going to import it or we have imported it back into QuickBooks. And we did so by going to the company dropdown and we went down to the planning and budgeting. And now we've got two budgets that have been set up. We created a new budget. You can create more if you like. And so now we have it in place so we can run the reports. Although we noted last time that we're out of balance. So we're gonna have to do a few little adjustments here to put this back in balance. But first let's go back to the balance sheet. Let's go to the reports dropdown. The main couple reports in the budgets will be the budget overview and the budget versus actual. This one in particular, budget versus actual, is quite useful. That's why we put it back into QuickBooks so we can run reports such as this. Let's first look at the overview reports and adjust any uh, problems we have in the data input. So I'm on the balance sheet report, next, finished, and there we have it. Now I only have three months of data in the system, so I'm gonna change the range up top to go through 033123. Uh, and then let's make it a little bit larger so we can see it a little bit better. Fonts and numbers, change in the font, bring it on up, let's say to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. So there's what we have thus far. Now remember that when we look at the balance sheet, if I go back to the normal balance sheet, that the assets, liabilities, and equities will always remain in balance as we enter data in the normal balance sheet because QuickBooks forces us to use the double entry accounting system with every transaction. That's a great tool. When we enter the data into the budget, however, there's no such restriction. So we could enter things out of balance. As we can see here, we're not in balance because for example, assets do not equal liabilities and equity. So we um we did have it equal in our budget over here that's an indication that there is something wrong in the data input so now the question is how do we double check in in as efficient a way as possible i'm going to see if i can hide this and say i'm going to show tabs only so one way to do it is to is to check the totals so i could say okay 
total assets and liabilities for January, for example, would be from here down to here. And I could just sum them up the way I have it formatted. Debits, positive, credits, negative. That adds up to 226784. So because those are all the assets, right? So if I went over here on the balance sheet, I can say, does that add up? 226784. So that's a good indication that my assets are not what's throwing me off. I could do the same for the liabilities, which should tie out to total liabilities down here. Boom, 83065. So liabilities start at accounts payable, going down to the first equity account. That's going to be 86064. It's a dollar difference. But we have uh, 83. It should be 83064. 83065 so that looks good so let's do the same for the equity which should come out to 1114720 so if i do that that should be these three 143720 versus 144720 so i know it's something in equity it looks like the 65000 looks correct the 500 is there and then the 79 but look at this 500 looks like it's it's going the other way. It's a contra equity account. So I could see that if I was to say, what am I off by here? I'm off by a thousand dollars. Oftentimes the other way you can kind of check this is say, let's pull up the trusty calculator. And I could see the difference here is going to be this, this two, two, six, seven, eight, four minus the two two seven seven eight five thousand dollars if i divide that by two then i could see oh it's that 500 it's going the wrong way i can also add these up and say okay that comes out to one four three seven two oh for total equity which should tie out to the total equity here which is at one four four seven two zero it's off by a thousand dollars so i gotta flip the sign on this five hundred dollars is the bottom line so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into my budget stuff again. Budget planning, set it up, scrolling down, set it up and scroll it down. I'm going to say this is a negative. I'll do that all the way across and see if that fixes the problem all the way across. Okay. And then back to the balance sheet. Now do my assets equal my liabilities and equity. So 226784, 226784, 24900, 240. So I'm still got something 230. Let's do, let's check that out. February still has a problem 238237 minus the minus the 240900. So there's a difference of 2663 there. Okay, so I don't know what that is. Let's try to do the same method for February. I'm going to go, okay, February. What? K Paso. Let's add up my assets here down to here. That's 279484. Uh, if I go back on over here, total assets are 238. So it looks like there's something in the assets. Then I can look at the subtotals for the assets. So I might look at total current assets, 145,210. And that's going to be from here. Actually, wait a sec. That doesn't, I messed up. Hold on a sec. It goes from here down to the liabilities start there. It should be 24899 total assets. And so I'm still off. Okay. So then current assets should be 145210. So current assets go from here to here. I'm at 147. So it's something in current assets is off. So cash is 106,212. And it should be 106,212. 25, uh, 814. This is 24. So it looks like here's the problem in the AR. Okay, so let's go back on over company drop down and go to my budget again. Ultra Vase. And we're going to say this is going to be for Feb. Barry is going to be 25814. So this one should be 25814. 
and then March should be 28673. This one in March should be 28673. Is that right? 28673. I think so. Let's do it again. Let's save it and check it. Are we in balance now? Finally? 24899. 24900. We're off by a dollar. I'm okay with that. So then 25660 and 25662. Once again, off by a dollar, which once again, I'm okay with. Actually, that's off by $2. I'm still okay with it. I'm still okay with it. You can obviously go in there and, and change one of these items by a dollar. It's a budget. So it, it, it doesn't need to be, of course, exact because we don't know what's gonna happen to the future. That's why we're kind of rounding here. And the fact that I rounded is part of the reason that we're off you know, by a dollar or so. But no worries, that looks good to me. So then uh, let's go up top. That's what we have thus far for the reports then. This is what we have for those three month period because we only entered the budget for three months. We could of course do the budget as a total column. Notice that it's different than the income statement just like the profit and loss versus the budget in normal times. Whereas we're, we're measuring a point in time and therefore when I go to the months, when I break it out by month, it's not gonna give me a total of the three months because this is showing where we stand at the end of each of those three months, whereas the income statement is performance that went through kind of like how far did we go in those uh, in each of those months. Now we could also do it by quarter clearly and so on and so forth. Let's bring it back to the months. And then the other report is going to be the reports drop down and the budgets will be the budget versus actual report, which we'll do as uh, proclaimed there. We want the balance sheet one. It's going to be comparing the budget and the actual just like we saw on the income statement let's bring it just for the three months that we have we'll bring it out to 033123 and let's increase the size of the fonts again let's take it up to just 12 this time okay yes and okay so now we've got the same kind of thing we saw with the income statement each month will then be broken out by the actual data we have two months of actual data that has happened we don't have anything yet for the month uh, of march that has happened there's still balances in it but we haven't had any new stuff that happening these are permanent accounts that's why there's still those balances in there we've had activity for for uh, january and february so if we pull out the trustee calculator we can see the differences here and the percent differences so clearly uh if i go all the way to the left we can see the difference is 88645.25 minus the 95259 on the budget, negative uh, 6613. And the percent then, the percent difference, or the percent then is going to be the 88645, the actual divided by the budgeted amount 95259. That's moving the decimal two places over 93.1 uh, about. So that's how we calculate that percent and clearly now we can kind of say okay you know where did we budget we're going to be after the month of january what actually happened in january what's the difference between the two what's the percentage change and that can lead us to then think okay you know what was what was good or bad about it then we can then we continue on with the budgeting process in the following month hopefully refining it down hopefully getting a better understanding hopefully doing it better going forward same items in february and then we had march although we didn't have any activity uh in march these being so so they're permanent accounts we still have the balances but no new activity happened in march so those are the the main uh budget reports budgeted the budgeted versus actual and the budget overview for both again the balance sheet and the income statement just to quick recap note that the income statement is probably the primary thing that you think of as the budgeting tool first you know, as your performance report and then you can get into the budgeting reports here you probably as the accountant are are going to help out with the budget but it's not something that you would think that you would automatically be doing uh if you know if you just were hired for a bookkeeping job or an accounting job right because your job is to do the past data and you need help with the future data the general process i would think would be something like 
export prior data to Excel, adjust it within Excel, then import it back into QuickBooks so that you can run reports such as the budget versus actual reports.